Now, something that some people just had last week in the MLCD class. We are looking at hierarchical agglomerative clustering, one of the earliest methods. Last week we already did it essentially on a toy example. And it's uh, early from, from biology, from what is called numerical taxonomy. So you want to make a map of the species that exist and put similar species close together in this tree type of structure. And now we want to make this automatically so it becomes numerical taxonomy and not manual taxonomy. So the idea is that initially every object is a cluster on its own. Then we find the two most similar objects and merge them into a new cluster. And then we repeat this. So in the example at the bottom, we may have found that these two are maybe these two points. They are the most similar. They have a distance of one. So I merge them. And these two also have a distance of one. So I merge them. And these two have a distance of one. So I merge them at a distance of one. And eventually, I've merged everything that has a distance of one. And now I have to merge these. They have a distance of two. So I end up doing this type of aggregation. But that may be my best choice once I've merged all that had a distance of one. And then at some point, I will have to merge these. And that is uh, probably using Euclidean uh, Manhattan distance. So we have a distance of three. And then we perform this merge until my entire data set has been merged into like the root of my tree. And then it looks like the phylogenic trees that you see in biology. So we get this type of tree structures. We have to make a number of choices. We have to define how to measure the similarity of these points. Once we have a group of points and another group of points, how do we define the distance of these two groups? That is called the linkage. And then we can perform different algorithmic optimizations. We were skipping these in, in this class. You probably had them on Thursday. We have a number of common linkages. Again, in this class, I think we only include a part, we make this a bit shorter. The common idea, the early idea, was to use the closest pairs. And now we are in similarity. We are looking at the pair that has the maximum similarity. And for complete linkage, we will be looking at the minimum of the similarities of two points from different clusters. The chart on the right hand side, because there's no visual representation of similarity except distance, it's kind of still showing the distance. And that is where this lecture differs from the one that you had last week, <laughs> that we have this flipped around for similarities instead of distances. For the average linkage, it does not ma make a difference. It's still the average. Centroid linkage is defined on L2 norms, so we don't change it. If we're using it, we will be using it on L2 norms. And similar holds pretty much for the others. Mequity as the unweighted version, median the same. Ward linkage is based on variance. Variance is not on cosines, but it is related to cosines. And minimax linkage, if you would want to flip this around, we would get like a maximum of the minimum similarity. But the intuition remains the same, and we won't be using it in this class. We can compute this type of algorithms faster by using Lance Williams e equations, or at least in many common cases, this is the fastest strategy. And the Lance Williams um, equations, they are they compute this recursively. So I compute my new similarity based on my previous three similarities of the clusters, the A, B that I combine, and some other cluster C, and the cluster sizes. And of course, we can do the same technique on similarities that we did on distances here. And that saves us, for example, in 
the case of, simi of single linkage, finding the maximum similarity of any two points in the cluster, which could be quadratic many pairs that I need to look at. Here, I only look at these two values to find the maximum similarity. So it's O of 1 per combination. And I can then repeat this. Kind of the drawback that I need, to, that I get, is I have to store these values in the matrix. They need a modifiable matrix. The Lance Williams equations, they are defined in a generic form that has four weights in here. But in a lot of cases, these weights are zero. It's kind of an umbrella version of what we might be interested in. For single and complete linkage, there's kind of a hack in here. Because by the absolute value of the differences, combined with both of the values, kind of encodes the maximum, respectively the minimum function. This is kind of transferred to this absolute in here. I don't like this. It's a hack to make this look more general. And OK, you can then cover these two cases in the same framework rather than saying one is the minimum and the other one is the maximum. But there's little you gain from doing this in practice. There are some cases in here that are closely related. So average and McQuitty are essentially the same. Ex if we ignore the weight of A and B, if the size of A and B is always reset to B1, then we get exactly the weights in here. So it is average group linkage ignoring the cluster sizes. And the same holds for the relationship of median linkage to centroid linkage. If A and B are 1, then this is 1 half. If A and B are 1, this is 1 by 4. So that these are kind of stupid versions that ignore the cluster weights. The one that's kind of most interesting for text data is actually word linkage despite it being based on variance, sum of total squares, the increase on that. It has what looks like to be the most complicated of these equations, but um, well, you just implement it this way, and that's it. It's not a particular difficult equation. It's a division, kind of a weighted um, average of these values. OK, um, of course, single and complete linkage. These are make a lot of sense for cosine similarity. Average linkage, average similarity is very intuitive to interpret. So these are kind of good choices for pretty much any data you put in there. 